a Bugatti room. If you've been to this website before, you know I'm a huge uh, Bugatti enthusiast. And the car we're going to talk about today is a very special car. It's a Grand Prix car that actually has real Grand Prix racing history, or Providence, as I like to call it. This is it right here, a 1928 Type 37A supercharged uh, Bugatti. The fascinating thing about this car, it was owned by Pierre Veron. Uh, you know the new Bugatti Veron, the big 16-cylinder fastest car in the world. Well, it was named after the gentleman who owned this car. He was a Bugatti test driver as well as a uh, war hero, a member of the French Resistance in World War II. Uh, just an all-around sort of classic sort of Renaissance guy. Race cars, uh, worked against the Nazis. I mean, it's it just a wonderful romantic story, and I'm sure that's why they named the Viron after him. Um, I got this car from a man named Robert Dunlap. He was president of the American Bugatti Club. In fact, you see, it's got the ABC American Bugatti Club. See the number three? This is the third car in the American Bugatti Club, which was started, what, 50, 60 years ago, at least. Uh, Bob had passed away. I knew him. And after he passed away, I, I bought the car from his estate. And we put a little tribute to Bob up here in the garage. You know, the guys that keep these things going over the years really need to be commended. Um, there's Bob there, president of the American Bugatti Club. Here he is racing. That's in a Japanese magazine. He was uh, in his late 70s there. That's about Laguna Seca. It's fascinating to have a car that has real Grand Prix history. This is not like the car that ran. This is the actual car that ran. This car came in third in the 1928 Tago Floria. Top speed on this car is about 122 miles per hour. Bugatti was born in 1881. He died in 1947. He only lived to be about 57 years old. He was an artist as well as an engineer, designed his own cars and built his own cars. The Bugatti was the first racing car ever designed as an entire concept. See, other designers considered the chassis and body separate entities, not Bugatti. The stability of this car is really due to the low center of gravity, the chassis being very low without detracting too much from the ground clearance. This engine comprises semi-elliptical front springs located outside the frame members. They have rebound clips on the forward half. Uh, the well-known and tried reverse quad elliptical springs carry the rear axle, and shock absorbers of the Bugatti design being employed on both sets of springs. Wheelbase is about 94 and a half inches. Got four-wheel drum brakes. Unlike the Type 35 Bugatti, which has those beautiful alloy wheels cast into the drums, this being a little cheaper car had wire wheels with uh, standard brake drums. This is what they call a moto meter. If you look on the other side, you'll see this when we have the car out on the road. This, this is your thermostat. You have a thermometer right here. It will uh, read your temperature. Obviously, as the red goes further up the gauge, your water is getting hotter and hotter. So you can see that easily from the driver's compartment. As you can see, Bugatti's always had these cable operated brakes that work quite well. Classic Bugatti axle. Let's take a look under the hood here. You have your classic Bugatti straps. You know, Bugatti was quite a horseman. He loved thoroughbred horses. That's what pure sang means, pure blood. So you see a lot of this kind. It's fun to go down to the uh, stables can you make me up some Bugatti harnesses? Sure, how much will that be? 18 bucks, yeah, great. Let's take a look here. Beautiful little motor, like a watch. This model is the supercharged one and a half liter, that's 1500 cc, four cylinder engine. It revs to over 5,000 RPM. The aluminum camshaft gear is enclosed in a neat square aluminum cover. It's bevel driven through a vertical shaft. That's the way they did it in racing engines. Still do in many. The cylinder block is bolted with aluminum alloy crankcase. And it holds about uh, 10 pints. Both the, the rev counter and the Delco distributor uh, take their drives from the rear end of the crank. Got a plane bearing crankshaft and three valves per cylinder, two intake, one exhaust. Now the Type 35 Bugatti had a roller bearing crank. See, this Type 37 was built to be a less expensive alternative to the eight cylinder uh, racing car. By running plane bearings, you didn't have to replace the crank all the time. Uh, although not quite as fast or as sophisticated, much more durable engine. And quite a number of these have beaten the eight-cylinder cars. They're, they're fast. Most Type 37s, the road-going one, had a distributor. This has a magneto. Here's a cutaway of the Bugatti engine, quite compact and sophisticated. Notice how the valve guides are employed to hold down the cover plate. That's your pop-off valve. This corresponds 
occasion like that, you'll hear, boom, you hear a puff of too much pressure and you'll blow a little puff of smoke through there. Quite romantic. Well, the only thing we added was this fan up here. You know, in Los Angeles traffic, obviously a car is going to run hot or overheat. We put a catch tank in it for when you race the car at Laguna Seca. You don't want to be spilling uh, uh, water all over the track. Clutch and the brake are quite close together. I actually have to wear little tiny loafers or slippers. You kind of have to do this when you're shifting. You sort of touch it with your toe. It's a little tricky, but uh, I really need to lose some weight anyway. The seats are fairly low. They say in their manual there's plenty of leg room. I don't know. These French guys must have been pretty short. Everything above this panel is stock. I put an electric fuel pump on it, also a horn. <laughs> A few other little things like that, just so you could drive it in traffic. It doesn't have any lights. It's got stoplights. There's no headlights on it. That's your ignition. That's your fuel pressure. That is your oil pressure. This one here is your advance and retard for your ignition to advance and retard your spark. Bugatti's always had to have a clock. You have your rev counter and you have an ammeter. And down below here, we added this blower pressure, mag switch, electric fuel pump, and of course, water temperature. Always nice to carry a fire extinguisher especially on a classic car like this. Four-speed gearbox. Uh, your gearbox is located outside the, uh, the body here. Uh, and it's sort of reverse pattern. Okay, that would be first, which would normally be second in most cars. Straight up is second gear. Come all the way over here, come down for third, and then up for fourth. And you have an outside brake as well. This comes in quite handy if you want to sort of lock the rear wheels and slide it around a little bit, which is great fun. Uh, this is to pump up fuel pressure, and this don't really use it. You carried a, an extra oil tank under this seat. In a long race, if you were using oil at a prestigious rate, you could just the hand pump, the mechanic or yourself could hand pump more oil into the motor without having to stop and do it there. Uh, aerodynamic rear view mirror right there, little Brooklyn's windscreen. Beautiful four spoke uh, steering wheel. I love the Bugatti wood steering wheels. These are nicely, nicely made. Just wonderful craftsmanship in these cars. This here is your fuel tank right here. Just spin that off. Got to be careful with your elbow out. <laughs> then on this side, you have your water pump. It's spring loaded. You put grease in there, you open that, and that forces grease onto the water pump shaft to uh, lubricate it. Exhaust manifold, oil filter in here, a wire mesh screen. This right here is your supercharger oil. You will check this before we go. You fill this with oil. Have a little screen in there. And what this does is this, uh, you open the valve on the other side and it bleeds down oil into the supercharger to keep it lubricated. There's your Bugatti engine number plate right there. As you can see, just a beautiful, beautiful little motor. These are just wonderful cars and nothing sounds like a Bugatti. Dampers right here. I think on other web shoots I've called them dampeners. That's my mistake. It's just my bad Boston accent. They're dampers. They dampen the ride. They're not dampeners. So I apologize to the people who get, dear Mr. Leno, so I'm sorry about that. This whole body is held on by safety wire. We have copper safety wire here. This is what holds the body to the, uh, to the frame. Someone comes on, clips a wire, <laughs> the whole body falls off. So you gotta be careful. Nobody's got a pair of wire cutters around you. A moment ago, I showed you our supercharger reservoir. Let's make sure that's on tight. I'm going to open the valve here. That will allow oil to bleed down to the supercharger. Uh, quite similar to the supercharger in the Type 35, just a little bit smaller. This is your tachometer drive right here with this belt that drives your tack. I think we're ready to go. Oh yeah, got to change my shoes. Well, let's get it in and fire it up. We'll show you the procedure here. Get in the car. Uh, as you can see, a little tricky. Turn on your fuel. Retard ignition. Fuel. Mag. Nothing like the staccato mark of the Bugatti motor. Just a fantastic engine. It'll take us a little while to get it warmed up. Let's pull it outside. Displacement and it puts out approximately 90 horsepower 
has a top speed of 122 miles an hour, which is really incredible considering the size of the engine and the period. If you had one of these on the street back in the late 20s, nothing could catch it. Whether it was a drag race or a road race, brakes are excellent, lightweight, good handling car, fantastic automobile to drive, and quite docile in traffic. Doesn't overheat. There's quite a few historic owners of this car. I'm not sure who the first owner was. As I said, Count Canelli raced it, and Pierre Veron had it for a while. Then it went through a number of hands, and uh, my old friend Bob Dunlap got it in 1961. And now I got it. These engines are incredibly durable. In fact, one time I even put a rod through the side of the crankcase, knocked a big hole in it, still drove it home with three cylinders. My friend Jim, Jim Strandberg at High Mountain Classics, he's the Bugatti expert. He, re he repaired it for me and did a wonderful job. So Jim Strandberg, thank you very much. Jim, look, it's running good. can uh, give you the raw emotion of this automobile. The sights, the smell, the supercharger oil. There's almost no modern car that's exciting to drive as one of these. Oh sure, there are cars that are faster and handle better, but in terms of pure enjoyment and raw emotion, there's nothing like this. it is in modern traffic. Imagine in 1928 going through the rural roads of France and there was no traffic. There was nothing like it. We added a modern alternator that drives off the drive shaft so we can charge the battery while we're driving. Obviously back in the day in a race you run the battery down and that would be it but you don't want to get stuck in this thing by the side of the road with a dead battery. So we uh, we haven't altered the car. We just run a pulley off the drive shaft which turns an alternator which will uh, charge the battery. There's our motor meter measuring our temperature, water temperature 160, running quite cool. you enjoyed your ride in the Bugatti as much as I did. It's great to be able to have a piece of history like this, hang on to it, preserve it, but still get to use it and enjoy it in the manner in which it was intended. So hopefully the next guy that gets it when he does one of these videos will be able to say, hey, this moron comedian had it before me, but he took good care of it. We'll see you next week.